Toyota Phone 2 is a two-faced gadget that's unlike any other. On one side, it looks like a normal Android device with a 5-inch display, but turn it around and you're greeted with a second screen that's made for reading ebooks. The packaging gives it a classy feel as it unfolds to unveil the Yota Phone 2 and its accessories. Grab the phone and you'll feel the curved corners nestle comfortably against your palm. The front display is flat, but the e-ink screen is curved on the sides and has a matte, smooth finish. Both sides are protected by Gorilla Glass, but can get slippery at times. The power button and volume keys are on the right side, and the single nano SIM card tray is cleverly hidden within the volume rocker. Along the bottom, you'll find a speaker grill and a micro USB port, while the 3.5mm audio jack sits at the top. A vibrant 5-inch Super AMOLED screen with a full HD resolution adorns the front. The colors are rich, though perhaps a bit too warm, but the sharpness is great, so images, videos and games look fantastic, and it performs well under bright sunlight. On the back, the 16-level grayscale e-reader display is smaller at 4.7 inches, but comes with touchscreen capability. E-ink screens are dependent on the light around you as it reflects light and makes them more comfortable on the eyes, especially during long reading sessions. They also require very little to no energy to run and can stay on indefinitely without any power. Unfortunately, while the size is good for a modern smartphone, it's just not ideal as an ebook reader. In a world where consumers are used to reading off 6 to 8 inch Kindles and iPads, the Yota Phone 2's reading display feels too small. The other problem is that the reading screen has a perceptible lag when it comes to the touch screen, frustrating when you're using it to flip the pages of the ebook. Our solution is just to use the volume buttons. The screen can be used for other purposes though. Called Yota Mirror, it lets you operate the device fully on the rear screen, such as making phone calls and browsing the web. We're not sure why anyone would want to do that unless they're trying to conserve power. The main screen is much more responsive thanks to the Snapdragon 801 chipset. The Yota Phone 2 installed apps quickly and everything ran smoothly without any hitches, including graphically intensive games. The mid-sized battery was enough to last a typical working day for us, but with the Yota Energy app, we were able to use the phone's functions for up to two days. We extended the battery life even further by utilizing the rear display for other apps. But if you run out of juice, Qualcomm's Quick Charge 2.0 standard is built in, providing up to 60% battery charge in just half an hour. We didn't expect anything spectacular from the 8 megapixel main camera or the 2 megapixel selfie shooter, and the results are average, but hey, they get the job done. On the software side, Android fans will love the clean Google interface with version 4.4.3 KitKat under the hood. There is very little bloatware save for a couple of Yota phone related apps like Yota Hub, which lets you customize your rear screen, Yota panels for quick shortcuts, and some light casual games. But there is a price to pay for this two-in-one hybrid, costing upwards of a thousand Singapore dollars and beyond the 2,600 ringgit mark, the Yota Phone 2 is as expensive as flagship devices from Samsung and Sony. But if you want to own an innovative and unique smartphone that lets you indulge your passion for reading without carrying a separate device, that premium may be worth it. Still, until improvements are made to the e-ink screen's responsiveness or when it's fitted with a larger display, we can't wholeheartedly recommend buying a Yota Phone 2 just yet. It deserves a 3-star rating on the DNA test, high marks for design and innovation, but hampered by the value score.